All right, so I'm picking back up with you this week. Unfortunately, time has not been on my side, so don't have an official video for you. Had some construction projects going on around my house, including having to put a sub panel in down in my basement because the breaker box is pretty much at maximum capacity. So didn't even manage to get around to ordering the parts for that Thorin's turntable, so I still have to do that. But one of the things I did do is I got to looking at my Radio Shack shelf, just kind of looking over some of the things that were on it, and I was considering buying another piece, and I got to look in at this CD player here, this portable CD player, as they call it, and this would have been from the 1987 catalog, and we'll go ahead and flip to that page. If you wanted one of these back in the day, it set you back about $280 plus tax, and uh, they're considering this to be a portable CD player, model number CD3000. Of course, Radio Shack didn't make this. They had it made by Toshiba. Toshiba made it. And Toshiba also made one under their own name that looked pretty much exactly like this. I don't believe the door was silver. The door on this one is silver. And we'll take it out of this case in a moment. But very cool little CD player. I bought this pair about 15 or so years ago off eBay. I got it exactly as you see it with the case, the battery box, and the AC adapter for home use, including the carry-in strap. I believe when these came brand new from Radio Shack back in the day, you had to buy headphones separately. They didn't come with headphones. And I believe that's the way their cassette Walkmans were also sold. But uh, it's a cool little CD player, so I thought since I don't have time for an official video, we will play with this for a little bit. And, uh, you know, pretty sure that it's still working just fine. If you've ever noticed on my bench, I do have a second unit just like it that I use for a test CD player on my bench. Not in as good a shape as this one uh, that we're focusing on today, but still very reliable old CD player. And since it was made in 1987, of course, can't resist. Want to check out Momentary Lapse of Reason in it. Maybe hear a song and uh, just uh, kind of get it working again. It's been uh, sitting on the shelf for a couple of years or so since the last time I tried it. I assume it still works. If anything, we may experience a little static in the volume control, but that's not anything I wouldn't expect after being set for a while. Very cool though. And the catalog page here, they hype it up pretty good. Listen through headphones or connect to home stereo system. High speed audible search helps you find selections fast says here, lightweight and compact for super stereo sound at home or away. So with CDs, there's no rumble, no distortion, no surface noise, just pure music. Of course, they did not put in there that they do skip, but we don't care about that. We only care about how clean the sound is. Let's go ahead and take it out of this thing. See if I can do this one-handed here. Here we go. Very nice looking unit, very handsome. Got a nice metal disc platter there. And this battery box, as I recall, is absolutely spotless on the inside. I've never put batteries in it myself. But as I recall, all the terminals are very clean. And to get the battery box off of this thing, all you have to do is just pull up on this one snap here and then just slide. And the actual battery box comes right off. It holds six, or excuse me, nine C, or yeah, six, six C batteries for nine volts, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Very nice unit. And then you just take it and attach it right to this guy. On the side here, you'll find on the back, there's an actual line out, 3.5 line out, and then of course a 3.5 for headphones right here with a volume control. Let's go ahead and hook this bad boy up and put a CD in it and check it out real quick here. All right, let's go ahead and come back in. Went ahead and got the CD loaded up into it and it is doing its thing. We'll bring the volume up. I've got it routed through the headphone connection so we can adjust the volume here as we need to. How 
has a very cool function right here. If you pull this little lock over, it locks the door from opening while it's playing, which is, I thought, a pretty cool function of this. Yeah, so if you want to fast scan, you have to hold down the, pow the play button while you're holding fast forward or rewind, whichever direction you want to go. The door opens up. It's very mechanical in nature. It does have a stop point. Um, and everything just looks like it works beautifully, even including the volume control, no static. Let's try it out one more time here. We'll go ahead and fast forward to my favorite song from this. Let's hear a little bit of yet another movie on this bad boy. All right, let's get ready for the skip test. I'm just going to hit my fist down on the table. We'll see how bad it does. Not too bad. The first time was a little worse than the second time, but it didn't do too bad. Well, I want to thank you guys very much. I do appreciate you entertaining another one of these shameless filler videos as I was too tied up to make an official one. But hopefully next week, I'll get everything back together in my house here and I'll be back to uh, being out in the garage 
doing what I want to do instead of doing what I have to do. But anyway, I thought it was a very cool old piece to do a little show and tell with today. So, as always, thank you guys very much. Appreciate you keeping up with me and uh, checking out the videos on the channel. We'll listen to a little bit more of this on the way out. Just the same.